Hello, welcome to a very new exciting creature tutorial. This is a how-to tutorial uh, about teaching you how to animate a long flowy haired character blowing in the wind. We're actually going to animate this front-facing girl character with the hair blowing in the wind like what you're seeing now. Let me stop the animation. <laughs> and we're actually going to do this in just a couple minutes. Now this is all possible with creatures extremely flexible and powerful procedural animation system and you're going to realize how easy it is to animate in Creature for this type of animation. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the meshing mode. So here are the, the different meshes for the character itself and the first thing you want to do when you want to animate hair is you want to separate out all the different layers of the hair okay, and then lay, it, lay, lay them out on screen. So these are the different layers of hair that we have for the character. Okay. And then the next thing you want to do, as usual, is to assemble the character. You want to assemble the character up in the rigging phase. That's all very simple. And you want to put the bones in. Now again, the rigging phase and meshing phases of the creature are covered in previous tutorials. So if you have, you're not familiar with, with meshing and rigging creature, please go online and watch the video tutorials on how to mesh and how to rig. And of course, this sample character will be uploaded to the samples page on on the creature documentation site so you can download this character and play around with it yourself. Okay, so here are the the bones, the bone here's the bone structure for for the character and as you can see, you actually have a very long chain of bones for each layer of hair that you care about, right? So every single layer of hair that you want to wave in the wind, we have this long structure, this long bone chain, chain of bone just coming down. And the great thing about Creature is it's designed specifically to handle very, very complex bone rigs. You can have many, many bones. So just go ahead and put as many bones as you want and make sure they align well with the layers of your hair. That's a crucial part because we're actually going to use the procedural animation system later on, as you'll see, to activate these different layers of hair and make them animate. Okay, And of course I have a bunch of bones going in for the torso of the character and for the cat that the girl is holding up. Okay, so let's go to the animate mode and I am actually going to go to a test clip where there's no animation so we can start from scratch. Right? And so how do we animate the hair? Well, in traditional animation software, you probably have to do this manually, which will take you a very long time. You probably have to go in there and keyframe every, every single strand of hair, like so. And, and then you keep doing this for hours, and eventually you probably get to some result, which is probably very good if you spend a lot of time on it. But this is Creature, and so let's exploit the power of procedural animation to help us out. We're actually going to accomplish this hair animation in the wind in a couple of minutes. So how, how do we do that? Well, simple. First off, select the root hair, the root base bone of, of each hair strand, and then we're going to walk down the chain. We're going to select the entire chain. You can obviously hold down your control key and select more bones, or you can just hold up, click on the root hair and, and press control M. That gives you the entire bone chain. Okay, And then just click install motor, and we'll use the bend physics motor for this case. So do that. All right. If you play the animation, oh, you can see that the, let, let's turn on the bones. You can see that the bones are doing something, right? Okay, that's very cool, except it's wiggling a bit too much, right? So let's up the damping. So damping is basically the property that determines how quickly the system bleeds energy. And in this case, because we want a hair to be quite damp, we want it to, to actually bleed energy faster so it doesn't it is not that wiggly right so we want to increase the damping value so we can try a value of say 20 and let's see what we get okay so that's that's a more calmer piece of hair okay so now we have the band physics motor installed for one 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 layer of hair let's do it the rest let's do it for the rest so let's click on on the this other uh, this, this other hair strand control M and then install motor for that guy right and then let's up the damping to say 20. Okay, that's cool. Maybe 15. Maybe it was too much. Oh, that's that's too little. <laughs> so you want to adjust the damping value to something that is reasonable. Okay, that, that that probably will work. And then let's go on to the next next strand of hair. Same thing. And then I'll give it a damping value of 20. And the next strand of hair. 20. 
right? So you can see it's actually really simple. I just go in there and install the band physics for every single strand of hair I care about, right? So I'm just going to keep doing this, and it's actually really simple and actually really fast. You click on one root bone, you click on, you press, sorry, Control M, and you apply the motor. Yeah, not too difficult. Much easier than manually keyframing, although that's also a possibility if you want to fine tune it at the end. So that's not beyond the question. Okay, so let's play this. So now you have the hair settling down, which is kind of cool, right? Of course, the hair settling down isn't very exciting. It's just hair settling down, right? So how do we actually make it flutter in the wind? Well, again, we're going to leverage another portion of the powerful procedural animation system of creature, which is going to use the force fields feature. So click on force fields, and this actually allows you to add a wind system that's actually going to interact with all your physics procedural physics motors to make it all come together. So click on add field, and click on direction force field motor. Okay, <laughs> now let us assign the field, so click on assign field, and then let's assign it to all the bone motors. So click on select all, and close. Okay, so let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, this is a very strong wind, it's too gusty. So that's bad. So what do we do? Well, we just reduce the scale of the, 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 the force of the wind. So what we do is we just come in here and we can click on scale and let's take it down to say 0 0.05. Let's see what happens. Still very strong, but you can already see it's doing something pretty cool. Let's take it to 0 0.01. Well, and there you go. Now the wind is a lot, a lot more manageable, right? We actually have something much more reasonable now. And you can actually change the frequency of the wind. You can change a lot of things with the procedural wind field, actually. You can make it blow faster, you can make it blow slower by just changing the frequency of the wind. So you get different effects. You can, you can change the fall off, you can change the radius, you can change how, what kinds of angles the, the wind is actually blowing on, right? So this is a very powerful, powerful tool, which allows you to change the effects of the wind and make it affect the hair. And see, I just changed the scale frequency. So now you actually have a wind which has a higher turbulence. Sorry, I changed the turbulence, <laughs> and now it's a higher turbulence, so it behaves more like a very randomized, noisy wind. So again, play around with these values. The documentation on what each property does for the wind field is all fully documented online. So you don't have to understand all of it right now, but you can play around the values and experiment very easily with Creature. That's the power of, of the procedural animation system, and you can change these values and actually keep them over time as well. You can make the wind really weak in the beginning, and you can, you can keyframe it to change it, to make it really, really strong, say in 100 frames, for example. Right? So I can actually say, I can do this, I can come here, and let's say I still set a scale of 0 0.01 here, and then suddenly from frame 35 to 50, I'm going to take it up to, say, 0 0.05. So let's see what happens. Ah, you see? So initially the wind was weak, and then now it's stronger, right? So anyway, now, so that just illustrated the power of the procedural animation system. And look, just literally, I promise you, in a few minutes, we already have a pretty cool system that is blowing the hair of the character in a rather convincing way, right? So this, I hope this illustrates to you why you want to use procedural animation for your animations in Creature, because it saves you a lot of time, especially for doing very complex types of secondary motion, like long flowy hair, wind, or cloth. This is going to buy you a lot, and I highly recommend you doing that. Now, there's other things, obviously, going on in the animation. So let's go back to the animation that I was demoing just now, and let's see what's going on. So in this animation, there's quite a few things that are happening. So there is the, there's the physics motors that are actually getting driven by the wind fields for the hair. That's probably the most difficult animation you can imagine, but it's not in Creature. But in, in a regular case, it would probably be the most complex. But once that's done, there's other things that are going on. For example, the girl's head is moving left and right, and that's driven by a rotate cycle motor. Okay, a rotate cycle motor. And the cat itself, the tail is driven by a rotate cycle motor. 
and the tips of the tail are driven by band physics. In fact, let's demo that again in the test case. So let me go back to the test case and let's try the, the cattail. So I'm going to install a rotate cycle motor at the base of the tail. And I'm going to give it some valid angles, say 10 degrees to negative 10 degrees. Okay. So watch, watch what happens. Okay, so it's cool. That the base of the tail is, is 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 rotating about, so the whole tail rotates rigidly, which is okay. You know, that's what you see in traditional cutout or puppet animation, but kind of boring for my taste because tail is actually a deformable solid. So let's make it more wiggly. So again, same trick. Click on the one of the bones of the tail. Control M. It gives, get, selects you all the other bones down the chain. Let's install a bend physics motor. And this time around, I'm going to turn off gravity because I don't really care about that. I don't want gravity in this case. And let's play it. Oh, now you can see the tail's wobbling about. I wobbled a bit too much, right? Because the, the damping term wasn't set enough. So let's up it to 20 and let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. And now you actually get a more convincing tail. And this was all done in a, in a, very easily. All I did again was I installed a rotate cycle motor at the base tailbone to drive it as the overall driver, and then I just put I just put bend physics for the rest of the bones, and that's all you need to do to get really convincing, easy, and high quality secondary motion with creature. It's a combination of the bend physics motors and the rotate cycle motor. And in the case of the hair, it's literally just a bunch of bend physics motors driven by a force field or wind field and that's all you need to do. So let's go back to the default animation and see the, res the, the actual animation in full. Right. So this is the animation that's going on and of course you notice there are the her eyes are actually blinking. Right. So that's actually accomplished by a bunch of re region mesh motors. So that that's done with the region mesh motors which allows you to actually overlay a default grid and perform FFD, a freeform deformation, with your creature meshes. So if you want to learn more about that, please go online and look at the tutorials on using the mesh grid deform motor to accomplish grid or FFD deformation. Right? But anyway, so that is the tutorial for this long flowing hair front facing character. I hope you enjoyed it and it certainly didn't take that long to accomplish this quality in the procedural animation system of Creature. So I hope you have, have, have a fun time animating and thanks for watching.